Let's welcome from CJ Affiliate, VP of Corporate Development, Ben Cupetti. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm going to try my best. Uh, as you can hear, this is not my normal voice. I wish I could blame it on last night's party, but I just have young children who decided to get daddy sick last weekend, and this is the last of it. So I'll do my best. If you can keep up with me, I can keep up with you. All right, so everyone feeling okay? We just had lunch, feeling kind of recovering from last night, getting ready for tonight? Yeah? It's okay, you can talk to me, it's all right. All right, so great. We, um, like he said, my name is Ben Capetti. Um, I am back at CJ. I came back last year um, after a 10-year layoff. Um, it's fun to be back. My wife and I uh, both worked at CJ back in the mid-2000s. Um, she is, I think, in the audience somewhere. She better be. Uh, she runs the affiliate program for, uh, for Columbia Sportswear, so we kind of have an affiliate family. Uh, we always joke that my two young boys actually know the difference between publishers and advertisers. They're six and four, uh, so it's fun stuff. Um, wanted to uh, talk today about data. Um, everyone's sort of familiar with this concept that we're sort of swimming and drowning in data right now. Raise your hand if that seems fairly close to the truth. Yeah, exactly. So when you approach something like this, a problem where you have too much of something, most of the time what happens is you can either freeze or you can move in a new direction. You can see things, right? So I always think of in terms of things like symphony orchestra instruments. There were no symphonies before we invented things like the cello and the violin and all of those things. Well, we're kind of at that spot right now where we get to start taking sort of artistic uh, endeavors. So we're going to talk today, or I'm not going to talk, these guys are going to talk, uh, about sort of creative ways to use data. Um, they've gone in directions that we didn't know were possible before. Um, so we're going we're gonna to have two trailblazers up here. We have Carly French um, from DISH, and we have Andrew Turner from NMPI. I said it right? Not NIMPI, by the way. NMPI. <laughs> um, Carly's going to be uh, talking. Uh, she spearhead, spearheaded the, the program at DISH, the affiliate program, um, talking about sort of the quality of customer and improving the quality of customer using call tracking. Um, and then Andrew's going to come up and sort of blow your mind um, with how he partnered with CJ, an, MP, an MPI partner with CJ, um, using data to start changing the game for paid search. So, we ready to hear from some experts? Let's show, not tell. All right. So, we have Carly, we have Andrew. I think they look better in person, too. So, Carly, all you. So like Ben said, we're kind of living in a time where we have a ton of data. We're also living in a time where we have a ton of great TV programming. So on average, Americans are watching more TV than ever before. We're watching about five hours of TV a day. I know I've lost many weekends to binging some of my favorite TV shows like Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. um, but with all this great content, you need an awesome TV provider to give you access to it. And that's where Dish comes in. So DISH provides pay TV service to over 13 million households nationwide. And we're really committed to providing our customers with the best TV viewing experience. And we're doing that in three ways. First is providing our customers with the best value for pay TV. We're offering our new customers a two-year price guarantee because we understand that changing bill prices and surprises on your bill is a huge pain point for our industry. We're also committed to being the best in customer service. And we've proven that by winning the 2017 award, J.D. Power Award for Best Customer Service and a 2018 ACSI Award for Best Customer Satisfaction. We're also really focused on providing our customers with really innovative technology and new ways to watch the content that they love. We're currently the only pay TV provider that enables um, integration with Amazon Alexa, the Google Assistant, as well as our very own voice remote. And this gives you total hands-free control of your TV experience and makes for a really easy, smart home experience. So with all these great benefits and all these great values, we want to get our product into as many customers' houses as we can. So we launched our affiliate program in 2016 to do just that, to acquire new Dish subscribers. And in addition to that main goal of acquiring new Dish subscribers, we had sort of three supporting goals of what we wanted to be achieving and what type of customer we really wanted to be acquiring. The first would be to acquire customers that have a really good credit history. 
And a really good credit history might seem like a really odd attribute for us to go after and target, but it's really super important for DISH. So a good credit history is an indicator for us that a customer is more likely to pay their bill on time and also that they're gonna stay a DISH customer long term. Our second goal is to kind of grow our new subscriber base in our target geographies. And for DISH, this really means growing our subscriber base in small town America. So our founders really created DISH as a solution for customers who were underserved by cable industries in those small town areas. And we continue to make them you know, a really important part of our business today. Lastly, we really needed to achieve a positive ROI on our marketing spend. So we were unsure of if affiliate shoppers were even interested in purchasing a pay TV subscription through traditional affiliate uh, coupon loyalty and content sites. So to monitor all three of these goals, we created a really unique custom dashboard that we call our quality metric report. So our quality metric report takes into account a lot of different data points, but it really focuses on what type of customer we're acquiring. So like I mentioned, it measures that customer's credit history by adding in a DISH quality score. It also adds in their zip codes, so where the customer has set up their service, and if we're actually going after customers in small town America. And then also adds in a really important data number, which is call transactions. So kind of like Ben said a little bit ago, call transactions are really important for us, and they've helped us grow our overall affiliate program. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So some of the initial learnings we had from developing this really awesome QM report is that we learned affiliate is driving one of our highest quality customers in the business. And by that we mean that the customers in the affiliate channel have on average 20 points higher of a quality score than any of our other digital channels, which is really great for DISH. It means that we're getting a higher lifetime value out of those customers, and we're providing them with a really great service. In addition to having a higher quality score, we're also achieving 62% of our new activations in those target geographies. And this has been a great focus for DISH throughout 2018 and into 2019. So as we continue to expand, we're really looking towards our affiliate partnerships to continue to help us grow in that market. Lastly, we're achieving a 3x return on investment from our affiliate channels. So not only are we getting really great quality customers, we're also getting them at a really profitable rate. So like I mentioned, call transactions are really important for our business. And they're really important because almost 48% of our conversions take place over the phone. And that's half of our business that is taking place offline and not through our online shopping cart. So we really needed to find a solution and work with our CJ account team to create some sort of call tracking system that would be able to analyze not only online data, but also incorporate our offline data. By doing that, we implemented a call tracking technology. So what our call tracking technology does is it connects those offline interactions and that digital journey to an offline phone conversion. When a customer is referred to dish.com from one of our publishers, they're assigned a unique toll-free number that's specific to just them. And they can navigate throughout our site, go look at packages, different features, all of the great things we have to offer. And then if they decide at any point that they would like a more personalized experience and talk to one of our sales agents, they can call one of that toll-free numbers that's displayed on site. And that number is gonna direct them to a sales agent who has personalized information about that call. Once that customer then converts, we pass that data back into CJ on a daily basis. So we're, getting able, we're able to see real-time data on these customers who are converting offline and connect it back to the originating publisher who drove an online click. And just to kind of show you what this looks like on site, it's a really seamless experience for most of our customers. So if you can see the toll-free number kind of in that green box, immediately once you get to site, it's gonna to change to a new unique number. And again, that unique number is gonna capture really important attributes about you and your journey. So specific to affiliate partners, it's gonna capture the referring publisher's name, call date, time, and then also a really important piece called the shopper ID. So I know most loyalty partners are pretty familiar with what that shopper ID is, but for those who don't know, a shopper ID is the way that our loyalty partners can connect back a offline transaction to a unique user on their site. 
So by being able to add in that shopper ID to our call tracking technology, we found a solution that works for not just coupon and content partners, but also a really big part of our base, loyalty partners. We've also learned that just combining both of these data sets and reviewing our program holistically has provided really great insights for us. In addition to just improved customer experience and being able to acquire more customers, we see a higher conversion rate for customers who are converting over the phone. That conversion rate is 10x versus what they're doing on an online cart. We've been selling TV for over 20 years, and to say that some of our sales agents are good at selling TV would be an understatement. So the 10x improvement in conversion rate is not necessarily surprising, but something that we really emphasize with our partners to get them to understand that paper call and call tracking is something that's really important for our business. In addition to improved conversion rates, we've also been able to invest a lot more into our affiliate channels. So year over year, we've added 40% increase in overall marketing dollars to the affiliate channel. We're continuing to improve and optimize with current publishers and continuing to recruit new publishers through call tracking. Call tracking also enabled us to credit 71% more new Dish subscribers back to our publishers. So this sounds great, not only for Dish, but also for our partners. They are getting paid commissions on traffic that they were already sending to Dish. And now that we're able to connect some of those offline transactions back to the originating click and that originating digital journey, we're able to provide a lot more value back to our partners. We've learned a lot from the last two and a half years that we've been running our affiliate program, but some of our key takeaways around data uh, involve identifying your key data. So we know it's really great to measure your conversion rates and open rates and KPIs like that, but what we have found to be really successful is to identify key attributes of some of your best customers and work really closely with your partners to align on what type of customers and what qualities of customers that you're looking for so you can go after the best customers that have the most lifetime value for you. Second, we're really focused on embracing our offline data. We have almost 75% of our partners participating in our call tracking program, and we want that number to be 100. From some of the numbers that we've reviewed today, you can see just the amount of value it adds by having call tracking. It's almost half of your business that you would be missing if you're not enabling call tracking. And by looking at a complete picture, again, we're really able to understand the total lifetime value of the affiliate program and what each of our publishers are driving in value. We're also able to, as a result, be the most data-driven company and use that to be our best competitive advantage. Good afternoon. My name's uh, Andrew. I'm commercial director at uh, NMPI. This is my real voice. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it's my fourth. CJU, uh, it's the first time of speaking, so uh, yeah, go, go easy on me. Um, so let me tell you a little bit uh, about NMPI. So we're, we're part of a, uh, a wider digital media group. Um, so within that, you have three brands. You have NMPI, which is the media buying arm that I, I hope quite a lot of people in the audience are aware of. We have DQ&A, which is our technology reseller um, element. Um, so it's mainly uh, the resell of uh, Google marketing products. Uh, and more recently, Joystick. Um, so that's the creative arm of our media agency uh, that we recently acquired. Um, so I guess you're probably thinking, what, what are we doing here? Um, I guess that's because we were born from performance. Um, that's not me breathing fire, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, so we actually started back in uh, 2004, um, and we ran performance paid search uh, activity. Um, and we still um, operate in the same space today, and we've actually expanded our service set uh, to work on a performance model to cover paid search, programmatic display, and also paid social. Um, and really, the reason we wanted to come and talk to you uh, today and felt very, very well placed to talk about uh, this topic is because um, paid search has changed um, considerably. No longer just keyword driven, uh, it's very, very audience and data led. Uh, we thought it would be really cool to come and tell you, uh, talk to you about some of the really interesting things we've been doing. Um, so just to be crystal clear, um, yeah, here's, uh, here's a visual represent representation of, of how it works. So we're, you know, we're not talking uh, about um, linking through a, uh, a third-party website or a publisher website. Uh, we're, we're, we're direct linking 
we're using the NMPI proprietary technology as well as, as DoubleClick to build industry-leading paid search campaigns uh, that are covering all keywords, uh, including Google Shopping. Uh, we're covering that uh, domestically uh, in the US as well as, as, well as uh, across the globe. Um, and we're covering, yeah, being in Yahoo. Um, so it used to be this black and white. So maybe, maybe not this black and white, but um, very much paid search was keyword driven. Um, so we'll be talking about, can anyone tell me the, the country there in question? <laughs> Italy, yeah. So let's take the example that we're, uh, we're running paid search in, in Italy and very much uh, working on an arbitrage model. Um, we provide all of the media spend. So of course, if our, the commission uh, is lower than what's, what we're generating uh, in terms of spend, we would, we would pause the campaigns. So um, how it used to work is we would target everyone across all devices in a country uh, at all times of the day. Um, and, and using this, this very carte blanche approach results in a campaign being paused. What AdWords has introduced over time um, is much more uh, diligent detail in the way that you optimize and break out your campaigns. So I'm sure the, the paid search enthusiasts amongst us have, have used all of these uh, to, to the nth degree. So obviously now you're in a position, if you approach the setup and detail of your campaigns, that uh, using the examples here, you could target somebody in Venice on their iPad at 10 o'clock at night that's, uh, that's a female or you could target Rome on a mobile at one o'clock in the afternoon, who's a male. You could target Pisa. <laughs> Pisa on a desktop at eight o'clock at night uh, for uh, um, uh, an, older, an, older, an older guy. Um, now, I think uh, the people in Venice are uh, yeah, too busy, perhaps being romantic and um, yeah, not, 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 not too busy online. So obviously, as a result, from splitting out our audiences, we've, we've turned a previously unprofitable keyword into uh, revenue for our client of $90,000. Um, so I guess that's, that's kind of the, the big picture. It's probably a lot of, a lot of the uh, targeting that everyone in the audience is doing. Um, but I, I guess that's, that's kind of our heritage. We're, you know, we're, that's in our DNA. We're incredibly performance driven. And that's why, as an agency, you know, 18 years on, we're still operating in the performance space. And we've been incredibly successful, uh, not to not to toot our own horn, but um, done very well uh, this year, won a, a number of awards, and um, I wanted to bring to life uh, a particular award that, that uh, we were shortlisted for. Uh, so Fanatics, uh, Fanatics are an on online uh, sports retailer that sell uh, merchandise and sporting goods. Um, what they also do as well is they, is they power um, the e-commerce platforms for a number of sports teams. Uh, we were uh, lucky enough to actually work with their European division in supporting and driving paid search for a, a number of uh, football clubs. So uh, soccer, I do apologize. Have we got any soccer fans in the audience? Okay. <laughs> this is going to be hard going. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so we've, um, so we, so we work with a number of their, of their football clubs, um, providing support to their, their in-house search teams uh, across Europe. So we work with the likes of Manchester United, Real Madrid, Manchester City, uh, perhaps in the, in the crowd, the lesser known Everton, but still, still a very, very, very high flying Premier League team. Um, the really, really interesting thing about uh, Fanatics is, uh, is and, and, and sp uh, specifically the sports, sports teams that they work with, uh, is actually uh, the number of um, influences um, that are going to impact uh, whether or not that website performs. Uh, and I think this was, was, was really, really a unique opportunity for, for us as, as media buyers to really leverage and understand that, uh, that fan intent of what is going to make them drive them to the site to, to, uh, to buy merchandise. Um, I guess to kind of take a step back to kind of put this into, into perspective, obviously every, every retailer in the audience is, is aware of, of, of seasons and you know, impacting how you, uh, how you deliver and buy and manage your affiliate program based on, based on the seasons. I guess that's, that's relatively obvious. Um, new launches, new product lines that, that, that enter the market, of course, you're going to be getting behind that to make sure that your website's promoting those products or that your affiliates are pushing those, uh, those, those, those the, the brand new products that are most likely to be driving a sale. Competition. Uh, of course, you need to be reacting all the time to the competition that's around you and, and, and being aware of, of, of your surroundings. Um, but what's really, really awesome about Fanatics and the, uh, their e-commerce platforms for their sports clubs is that 
their website performance will be impacted by things such as uh, a game results or, uh, or a certain Harry Kane scoring a goal for England. Um, and these were amazing data signals that would have a huge impact on how uh, club websites would, would perform. And we, we as, as, as their performance paid search partner, really needed to dial into this data um, and to take advantage of it in its, in its truest form. Um, so to give you some examples of how we did that, it, all of this, I guess, seems relatively obvious, but uh, it's, I guess to kind of bring it to life, is, uh, hopefully that will, that will kind of get you thinking about what data you have available inside your own business that perhaps right now you're not, you're not leveraging. But uh, game scheduling, you know, of, of, of course, post-game, you know, there's going to be more interest in visiting, visiting the club site. So we, as the, as the paid search buyer, aligned our budget to take advantage of the increased traffic to try and drive more users uh, during a time in which that uh, search interest would be higher. Um, it's all good to say uh, the game scheduling, but what if, you know, what if uh, Man United were on the receiving end of a, of a heavy loss? You know, perhaps we, we, we wouldn't align budget as much. So it's important that we also overlaid the results. So the result of that fixture was also uh, incredibly uh, important. Uh, and actually, in, 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 in some regards, actually um, pausing campaigns and reducing them for, for periods, if, if the, uh, if the team lost. And of course, obviously, as working on a performance model, we had to be you know, in incredibly vigilant to the way that we managed our budgets. Um, a particular challenge that we had, though, uh, in running this campaign um, was around reacting to player performance. Obviously, there's a lot of shirts and memorabilia which are relevant to, to, to particular players. Any, anyone know who this is? Oh, it says it there. <laughs> <laughs> That was smart. That was clever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so so of course, yeah, player performance. Um, and I guess the slight challenge with player performance is that it's subjective. You know, some some fans might think that a certain player plays better than than another person. So so um, so we needed um, a data source to allow us to make that call of how we would then align player budget uh, uh, budget on player keywords dependent on on specific performance. Um, so this is what we did, is um, we realized that there was a, an open API into, into the Premier League Fantasy League. I'm, I, I know you guys have that over here, and, and it's, yeah, it's like the equivalent to, uh, to the draft, I guess. Um, and, and, and all of this would, would pass through um, player performance, um, and relative to the number of points they would score in a given week, uh, we would then feed that into the optimization of our AdWords campaigns, and up weight and down weight according to, uh, according to how that player performed. Um, so very much from understanding what challenge we had and, and uh, looking creatively at what data was actually not available to fanatics but available within, within the industry, um, we were able to, to produce some uh, awesome results. So close to 300% um, revenue uh, and traffic increase on, on player-specific keywords. Uh, and that was purely from monitoring player performance. Uh, so what would I offer as takeaways? Um, it's, I've, I've, well, I'm, I'm, I've, if I haven't got this across, so then, uh, then uh, yeah, I, it's, uh, I, I do apologize, but going incredibly granular in, in everything you're doing. You know, the set of, of AdWords is, is becoming more accessible um, for, for people to use, and there's so many opportunities to go to that next uh, level of depth in, in the way that you set up your AdWords ca campaigns. Uh, we use DoubleClick as an agency. Um, there's obviously uh, many, many other bid management platforms, but as you're getting to uh, a relative scale in the management of your media, you, know, you do need to consider a bid management technology. Um, review your performance influences. As, as, as we saw with Fanatics, they were fortunate that they are um, exposed to a, a number of exciting data points that, that we could take advantage for them. Um, and with that, for data points you don't have access to, think creatively of how you can access those third-party um, data sources and see whether, in fact, you can um, hack or be able to pull through that data to influence how you manage your campaigns. Um, and, uh, yeah, and finally, try and create your own PPC story and inspire your business. I think it, it can be typically one of those channels that uh, is, is very difficult to, in some cases, make sexy, should we say, but, um, yeah, hopefully, uh, I've managed to uh, make it slightly more exciting today. So uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.
Pretty creative, right? Oh, go for it. So what we wanted to do, we actually have quite a bit of time for you. Um, we wanted to open it up to question and answer. So we've got a microphone right here. Um, because it's after lunch, and you guys may take a little bit to, to warm up, I'm going to go ahead and prompt them with, a, with something here. Um, you all were very creative when it came to solutions. How did this process start? Which I know is a difficult question when you're thinking about like, all right, where did this whole thing, but did you start with a business problem? Did you start with the capabilities? Take us sort of through the different processes where, where you, you sort of said, ah, that was the light bulb moment. Here's where we started, here's how we ended. Yeah, I can start. So, um, you know, as a company, we know a lot about our customers. And over the last you know, couple of decades, we know that customers still like to call in to our sales agents. We sell a pretty complicated product. You have to give a lot of personal information, like your social security number and your home address, and you have to set up a time for install. So we knew that a lot of our customers were going to be calling in to sales agents, you know, regardless of how perfect our online experience was. So it really was trying to find a solution for that business need of we just know what customers' behaviors are and how can we address that to make sure we're you know, looking at our affiliates holistically and making sure we're crediting them for you know, sales that they're going to be driving even if they are offline. And when you approached, did you approach CJ with this problem or with this idea? So I think that was part of the reason we chose CJ, because CJ has already partnered with a really third, great third party partner that we use. So that was one of the um, main goals that we had for our program, was making sure we selected a affiliate network that had access to call tracking. Excellent. Andrew? Yeah, um, just, just add to that, you know, this whole session is about you know, how to use um, data to beat your competition. You know, and I guess in, you know, in Fanatic's case, you know, their, their competition was, uh, with the retailers, you know, that would also be, be selling, you know, the, the, the player product. So we needed to think, you know, creatively about how we could use, use data to take advantage of key moments. And, you know, key moments, you know, pertinent to sports clubs is, you know, is how, how that team is performing, which player has scored. And uh, I think from kind of really understanding the customer, um, we were able to kind of work backwards and, and really kind of figure out how we could dial into team performance to then influence the media buying and decisions we make from a paid search perspective. Excellent. Questions from you all? I do have one question that came through, Please. through the app. Mm. It's for Carly. And Carly, they would like to know what percentage of your demand gen programs are affiliate programs? Um, I would say within our digital portfolio, it's about 10% of our business makes up our affiliates. Um, within the larger organization, we have a lot of offline tactics that we still use that are really powerful for Dish. So it's a little bit smaller across the entire business, but it's still a really profitable channel that we continue to invest in and try and optimize and grow. You guys are shy today. Any other questions from the audience? I can keep going with mine, so we can, that's good. All right, I'll give you another one. So. When it comes to, now we have an advertiser and we have a publisher on the stage. When it comes to sort of what comes next, right? What's your next big, brilliant idea? How do you prefer to work from the advertiser side with a publisher and with CJ? Do you like them to approach you with solutions or do you like to start with a question? And sort of the flip side of that from the publisher side. Uh, do you like to come to an advertiser, or a specific advertiser, with an idea? Yeah. Or do you like to come up with an idea and then go seek out some sort of advertiser that fits that idea? I hope that's clear. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. And feel I'd, free. You, you, yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd, I would say it's, <laughs> it's, it's probably a, 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 probably examples of both. You know, I think okay. I think the, the the point around sports team performance is is pretty unique to Fnatic. So I would you know say in that in that example that was very pertinent to to that brand. But you know, there's 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 lots of opportunities that that, that, that we that we that we identify. You know, which which you know can can apply to. To many retailers, so um, yeah, there's there's I guess e examples of of both, but um, I think the the advertiser is um, yeah coming coming to us with a challenge as well. I think is I think is great. I think that shows that kind of collaborative you know working environment that you know that that they you know they trust they they value our opinion and want to kind of hear how we might approach and help them. And I, I think actually general business challenges you know of of, of actually. What they're looking to, they, we, we may surprise them that actually what we're doing, you know, could could really benefit their business. Carly. Yeah, I would say we also like a little bit of both. Um, 
on the dish side, you know, like I said earlier, we know a lot about our customer and we do a really great job of, you know, internally looking at what our customer base is, who are our best customers, and sort of what attributes do they have. So what we like to do is share some of those qualities with our partners and kind of put it back on them of how can you go out and reach us these customers and what other opportunities do you have in kind of your toolkit that we're maybe unaware of. I mean, we know most of the traditional opportunities on most affiliate sites, but we're really looking for unique and creative ways to go acquire new customers. Um, and if we have solutions of exactly, you know, something we would like to be promoting or certain events that we would like to be supporting, you know, we then will go to partners and ask for certain exposures at sites or things like that. Got it. Sounds like we have a question back there. Yeah, uh, this is a question for Andrew. Um, you mentioned a pretty strong relationship between goals scored and uh, amount of sales a, a particular player's jersey uh, would perform. Um, did you find any other interesting relationships with other uh, game metrics, such as like saves a goal you might do, or maybe a negative relationship between somebody losing the ball a lot during a particular game? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we had to be very, very sensitive to um, you know to, to, to player transfers, um, you know to, uh, to to gossip. You know, if uh, players decide to have you know too much too much fun at the weekend and then you know perhaps doesn't you know doesn't doesn't perform you know on, on game day you know there's there's so many so many factors involved obviously you know negative uh, negative team performance as well you know from from losing i guess the interesting thing about the plugin with the uh, the, the fantasy points is, is is again what that potentially doesn't account for um, you know our players that maybe wasn't involved in you know not conceding any goals or scoring any goals as you know there's the players who actually had a solid performance but maybe don't get don't get, don't get kind of recognized. So we're, we're going to take it kind of one step further, and we've, we've actually identified further metrics available um, that actually allows us to look at, um, yeah, kind of less, less kind of obvious kind of points scored and more around kind of skill levels and intensity passes made. So, yeah, it's a, a lot of detail. <laughs> I also have a question here. Is getting the budget for this creativity challenging? If so, how do you go about probably meant creative challenging. If so, how do you go about making the case to invest either the time or the money required to get this work running? It's a great question. Uh, yeah, so, so I think, I think that what, we, what we try to do at the, the very, very best of our intentions is to, do, is, 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 is to, to work creatively in the bounds of the commission, commissions that, that we have. And if, you know, if, if we identify an opportunity that, that perhaps requires some additional investment or, a, or a, an increased CPA for a period of time, we would take that, that business case to the advertiser. And because we've obviously, in, in a scenario where we're already live, we have some you know, pretty solid data to kind of go to the client and say, look, you know, with this invest, increased investment from you know, this additional exposure, um, you know, this is the uplift. So I always think the, out, yeah, the, the, the outcome is, is, is always important to kind of go to the client with and you know, the uplift. Carly, did you have a further? Yeah, I would say for Dish, um, a little bit reversed, our biggest struggle is kind of getting publishers to adopt this call tracking technology. It does take a little bit of setup on their side, and there is some resources that they need to use to implement it. Um, so really, we just make the pitch of kind of what I just gave you of how the overall improved conversion rates is really going to impact their business. We project what type of revenue increases we believe they will receive from enabling call tracking and really use the data to convince you know, partners that this is the best solution for them. Other questions? From the CJ side of things, I'll just add my own opinion here. Um, one of the things that we love on a regular basis, both from advertisers and from publishers, is when they engage us in discussions um, rather than sort of requests, straight up requests. And the reason we love that is because we can then share that with the other side, right? And we can say, all right, this is the business problem we're working through. Uh, how, what are your great ideas? This is why affiliate will never be fully automated, right? These are about uh, relationships, this is about creativity, and this is why we have this, comp this great conference every, every year. So um, if you're an advertiser out there and you're thinking uh, about how to solve a business problem, um, please come talk to, to CJ, come talk to your, your publishing partners, and vice versa. If you're, if you're a publisher um, and you have a business problem or you have a business opportunity, um, talk to CJ, talk to your advertiser partners, um, because a lot, of the, a lot of times those conversations is, is really what propels us forward and uh, makes evolution uh, in the channel possible. 
Other questions, one more? Yes, there's another right. question for Andrew. Has your experience with Fanatics meant you are focusing on pitching to similar companies or think of other ways to use it for sports brands? Has it opened your mind also to other potential data you could use for other channels too? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, yeah, I mean, glitching onto the, the last part of the question, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's obviously obvious applications, um, you know, across other channels, I guess, you know, um, paid searches, um, a captive, you know, captive audience of somebody that, that, you know, we do still require to, to make a search. So there's obviously broader applications across programmatic display and, and paid social. Um, does it open up opportunities in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the sports field? Yeah, I, I guess there's, you know, there's, there's I think, um, the, the, the sector is, is, you know, is, is an interesting one because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very much dialing in um, to, you know, to, a, to a fan set that are incredibly passionate you know, about their team. And I think you know, what, what, what that represents and opens up is, is you know, all, all the interesting things, things you can do to, you know, to leverage, you know, leverage that, that, that passion, which, which maybe you know, with, with a more run-of-the-mill retailer might not be as, you know, is, 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 might not be as, is, is, maybe more challenging to kind, of, to, to kind of create that excitement. And I've just been told we're at time, so I'm, we're going to have to end here. Thank That's you right. so much for your presentation. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>